a while, little by little, we, we opened our hearts. Uh, I sense a while we started already. Uh, our hearts were born gradually before God, as we had our worship a while ago. And later, as we progress then, uh, by and by, we are still going to do it. Amen? Uh, Lance did us, was, did ask us, uh, what is this? Uh, asked us to do it. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like us to do it the second time. Can we check the person sitting next to us? And you tell the brother, tell the sister, tell the person sitting next to you. I'm happy to see you to, today in the house of God. Can you even? <laughs> uh, praise be to the living God. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Come on. Person's faces we so love and we miss for a while. For example, see si love. Uh, love is not around for some time because uh, our, what is this? Uh, girl in the house after after her wedding started a family already in uh, Manila but we are glad because she's around who else uh, yeah see si Jan Jan and uh, my best friend see si friends you know because of their uh, the nature of their jobs and the nature of their careers uh, that even on extended hours and times especially see si friends they cannot join us but today is indeed a special day amen and of course, your brother Nono and si sister Gina, you know what happened to brother Nono. Uh, he will have a lot to say thanks to the Lord first, and I believe he's starting to do it already. OG and I were talking to the doctor when brother Nono was admitted last June. Gina, you remember? The doctor said, he going to be, imagine at our face, uh, the attending physician uh, helping brother Nono, telling us, uh, your dad, he will only survive by a miracle. Well, Brother Nono survived. So how can you explain it? Miracle. Amen? So we're happy to see Brother Nono and Sister Gina. Who else? Uh, Andy Mark is uh, coming back home already and that the permanent already. Uh, Andy? <laughs> and then I saw see si John. See si John, no? See si John Paul, one of our boys that really grew up in church. That was uh, you know, I felt uh, fans of John. <laughs> Praise be to the living God. And of course, he, uh, Ati Sheila, Asa si Ati Sheila, and uh, Brother Jess. By and by, I'm going to relate to you exactly some persons in our church that do have significant testimonies that even me personally, you know, I am moved. Anyhow, once again, anybody happy here in the house of the Lord? Well, shout and yell, praise the Lord. Can we give God a clap of praise? Come on. Because today is our church Thanksgiving day. I would like to preach a sermon that has this appropriate sense uh, to our occasion. I would like us to stand, ladies and gentlemen, for a while for the reading of the word. Let's continue to give an honor and reverence to the Word of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon I will preach the sermon. There we go. I am entitling our message by the grace of God as the greatest gift that we must thank. Okay. There are many gifts the Lord gave us, isn't it? There's so a lot. But the greatest that we ought to thank Him right this very afternoon. What, what is a pastor? I will explain in a while. But our passage is found, ladies and gentlemen, in Mark chapter 10, beginning 46 to 52. Ayun po. Our passage is found in Mark 10, 46 until 52. My inclination, because my Bible's translation is already English Standard Version, so I'm reading from the English Standard Versions, ESV. So, if we can share Bibles together, but this is the core of my message. Okay. And they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. 
But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. God bless the reading of his word. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this passage, the story of this passage is so nice, very nice. And uh, as I was reading, I don't just see blind Bartimaeus. Do you know how it is to be blind? Wow. But I don't just see here as I read the story Bartimaeus, I can see myself. Now, if you also can see yourself. Now before I will continue and uh, develop this further, let's just commit ourselves to God. We close our eyes. Almighty God, thank you so much this afternoon for consolidating us all. Brethren, O oh Lord God, we miss church members, O oh Lord God, uh, for some time, O oh Lord God, we should bear you, O oh Lord God, missed in our gathering. All of us, O oh Lord, are now here. And remember to the rest of our church mates, O oh Lord God, that because of some circumstances, unavoidable, inevitable, O oh Lord God, they still cannot be around. We know, O oh Lord God, certain amount of blessings transcending spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically. You will pour, O oh Lord God, into our gathering this afternoon. But we pray, O oh Lord God, same blessings we are about to receive from you, O oh Lord God, that shall come, O oh Lord God, that shall as well descend to them. And we pray generally, O oh God, for the family Axe Church. It's you who founded Axe. It's you who planted this community, O oh Lord God, here in Zamboanga. Lord God, though you trust our stewardship, but Lord, we talk, trust greater, O oh Lord God, for your care. It's you who will continue to lead us. It's you who will continue, O oh Lord God, to guide us, to conduct us, to grow us, to bless us, O oh Lord God. And Lord, to prove to the world that it's you, it's you, O oh Lord God, who, grow, uh, who grows, O oh Lord God, this church, who founded this church, built this church. You said, O oh Lord God, in this rock, I will build my church. Church is not the organization. Church. Is the body of believers we are. And nice to know, Lord God, we have a family. Nice to know that we are one. We are one in Christ. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come please, move in your own special way in our gathering right this very afternoon. Lord, collectively, all of us, and individually, Lord, in a personal manner, may you move inside our hearts, inside in inside every person's soul of God's soul and spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, the whole of this time we don't stop to praise and thank you for all of your goodness into our lives. Lord, 365 days, you have been so good to us. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, come on, people of God. Let's remain closing our eyes and about this time, I will ask every one of us here, can we lift both of our hands up and right now, as to our eyes are closed, you know, just thank God in your own way. Thank God. Say your words. You know, come in from your heart. Thank you, God, for your wisdom. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your favors. I thank you a lot for your provision. I thank you a lot, God, because He made me to prove myself. But He, he was you who did. You prove a lot, God, yourself in us. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. We honor you. We thank you. Hallelujah, God. I pray, oh, Almighty Father, that as I will deliver your word, you're going to place your unction, oh Lord God, to my heart and flow through my lips, oh Lord, as I'll deliver that God simply to its clearest, oh Lord, to its in a crystal, crystal clear, oh Lord God, in the simplest way. The word, your word, you're about, you're about, oh Lord God, us to receive. Oh Lord God, we can, oh Lord God, to die simplest and to that fears. 
We lift you up and we honor in Jesus' beautiful name. All will say, Amen and Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Right, Let us be seated. Now let me explain, brothers and sisters. Today as we are celebrating our Thanksgiving Day, to my belief, we must be grateful the most to God Almighty for the spiritual sight that He gave us. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this question. Are you, aren't you thankful to the Lord that once you and I, we were blind? But Jesus came to our lives and He opened our eyes and He gave us salvation. Now we can see how the Lord is seeing things, now we can feel to how the Lord is feeling things. Aren't you thankful to the Lord that God took the blindness out from your eyes that now we see, we experience, we enjoy salvation? Aren't you thankful? Everyone is. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. I believe this is the greatest. I believe this is the most. The greatest and the most reasons, the best reason why we come into the church today. Why we are thankful to God today. I believe there are plenty of the blessings the Lord endowed to us within this year. I believe so many. If I may give you perhaps individual piece of yellow pad perhaps you know back to back cannot be enough to list one by one to how and what are those blessings the Lord gave you personally to your family and that to include even our church but over and above all of this the top number one and the foremost is the spiritual side salvation I always hear this Benny Hinn said in, in, in all of his sermons, if you have watched, Benny Hinn said that the greatest miracle that a man can ever experience is not the, the miracle of, uh, you know, a deaf, a deaf ear being opened or a literal eyes blind open or a lame and can able to walk or a, a dumb or a... Uh, you know, a person that know, doesn't know how to speak, the Lord popped open the tongue and he, he now could start and begin to speak. All of these are created, but many him would always say, these are not the greatest. The greatest miracle that a man can ever experience is when his name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When that person experiences the gift of salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. That experience where the Lord, after we being lost, after we being in our darkness, God came down from His royal throne. God came down from His presence, scoured the darkness, scoured all of the emptiness of this world that the world could ever offer into our lives and found us and saved us and changed our lives. And you know what? There be where our lives, you know, uh, our lives were full of the trashes. And what happened? You know, the holy blood of Jesus, you know, washed all of our dirts. The holy blood of Jesus washed all of the trashes that we have in our lives. And you know what? We are called to be sanctified. We are called as sanctified. We are called as holy by God Almighty, not because of our good works. Hello, amen. amen. Don't be mistaken by saying I'm better than you. Why? Because you know I don't I don't lie, I don't uh, I don't steal, uh, I pay my tithes. I always go to church. You know I'm better than you because you always go to church once in two months. You don't pay your tithes, or you lie now, you lie often, or you do this and you do those. I'm better than you. Now let me tell you, all of us are sinners that need the grace of God. Even whether we lie or not, whether we do wrong things or not, all of us need the mercy of God. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> we are holy because of the blood. We are holy not because of our own human efforts and human works. We are because of the sacrifice of our Master, because of the sacrifice of our Lord, because of what He did for us on Calvary. We can go on and on all of these so great miracles that we mentioned. But the greatest of them, above the highest, the most of them, ladies and gentlemen, is our salvation. Hallelujah. 
Anything that we can see in our eyes may pass and are only temporary. When we rejoice, when we have a new phone, those are miracles because you, personally you cannot buy it. But the phone may be worn out and be gone one day. By the way, we will go to heaven. We will not be, what is this, bragging each other what kind of a phone you may be using. It's, it's not you say, oh, I am in heaven. I'm talking about heaven. And turn to someone else and say, I'm talking about heaven. Say heaven. heaven. In heaven, we will not be boasting each other, oh, mine is Apple. Mine is Samsung. My, what, what, what other what are the brands? In heaven we only will be talking about the Son. Amen? Amen. In heaven we'll only be talking about Jesus. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Come on. <laughs> the greatest miracle, ladies and gentlemen, listen, is when we were saved. When the Lord took us, got us from our darkness. Sometimes as any human being, I also can hit my uh, my limits. And uh, I had those. I also can go through blues. As anyone does. You read, you read the gospel Jesus had. He also had uh, some, some down moments. But you know what? When you're able to see how the lights were changed and how the lights receive a new hope and there is a restoration that you know that you know they were you know swear and we're going into a wrong direction but now they are walking into the path into the highway of holiness God is talking about and you see the light in their lives I, I tell you you cannot stop but to have your tears to fall last Sunday I was in the round I'm happy for Lance for France and Ian by the way by God's grace, I will have a surprise after my sermon. These boys, we are going to install this afternoon as uh, lay, lay ministers already in the church because to how they are laying their lives for the glory and for the honor of the Lord, to how they are helping me in the ministry, to give them the glory and the honor. Let's give Jesus a clap of praise. We're now nine years in Talusan. I still can fully remember it was 2025, a man was to die. It was in one of the hospitals here. And on his, so to speak, deathbed, the wife, think about it. How would, how would we feel perhaps when our time would come? Huh? Think about it. That's why it's really very needful, crucial. To how healthy and strong we are, we already could have made our peace with God. This brother on his deathbed and his wife, full of his fears, he know what to do. They have the money. And the patient was admitted into a hospital. I mean, good hospital, good doctors. But money, good doctors, medicines could not help. Are you still there, amen? amen. The man was dying. The man crying his tears, asking, Pastor, you please help me. Because I can see in his eyes still was wanting, wanting to leave. He still would want to leave longer. We prayed for Sister Delia was together with me. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. Evening about early 8. We prayed for the man and the Lord spoke to me, talked to me. There is spirit behind his ailment. There is spirit behind his sickness. Command the spirit to leave. Drive that out. So using, using the authority of the name of Jesus, I drove out the spirit. I commanded him, yes, leave in Jesus' mighty name. And something which cannot be explained. My long story short, the man survived. Survived. The man was healed. The, the man lived and even became a pastor. To him in the glory and the honor. Amen. Amen. And the funny thing is this, this man hated Christians. This man used to really hate worse pastors. Now he would use to shrug his shoulder and excuse, pastors are only up to money. Now God gave him the ministry of being a pastor, so I asked him, is pastor a ministry of money? And he smiled back at me, not pastor, in the same speed, giving money, the pastor, the one giving money. 
God was proving him, God was proving him wrong. The man, ladies and gentlemen, you know, was a gambler. The man was uh, a drunk, an alcoholic every day, every single day, cannot survive, could not live, brother, could not survive without, you know, alcohol. And he was a headache to the family. And the wife almost had already given up, you know, for the man to change and to transform. Are you still there? Hello. But one single unpredicted and suspecting day, you know, when the Lord visits a man, when the Lord touches a person, they usually are on a day where the man is not expecting it. God loves to surprise every human being. Let us remember that our Heavenly Father is a God of surprises. His expertise is to, is to turn the impossible to become possible. Let's give God a clap of praise. And He was healed. And I was there, I was standing because it was their Thanksgiving earlier week before us. I had my tears falling because I could remember how he was nine years ago. And his life was changed by the Lord. And the effect of the transformation, personal salvation of that man rippled even to tens of people. They, even those farmers that are living, you know, in the far flung, you know, uh, fishermen who do not have hopes anymore, but every day are living on a cycle of fishing a fish that can buy, you know, rice to bring to the family, and the family can survive for one, one another day, and the next, you know, the man would go again to the ocean and fish and have a catch and buy rice for the family. I mean, the cycle, the, the cycle of uh, endless, endlessness, uh, endless hope, endless hopelessness, I'm sorry, endless hopelessness. And this man shared the love of God to them. And the ripple continued to effect. And I was there dumbfounded. And my tears rolling from my eyes. And I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for saving the lives of these people. Thank you very much for changing, transforming the lives of these people. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Acts could be experiencing many more. And uh, what is this? Uh, plenty blessings today and in the coming years but let me tell you what will stand out today every single day and forever are the salvations of the lives of those who have come to the knowledge of Christ in the church amen, amen. you cannot be here unless you have experienced the gift of salvation thanks God for that amen amen the story ladies and gentlemen talked about a blind man. His name was Bartimaeus. I, I, I like to ask you, how is it perhaps the life of a blind man? Huh? We sometimes just so abuse our eyes. Have you not thought even for a while how is it to lose and uh, to lose the sight? To lose your sight. You cannot see, not just for an hour, not just for two, but all the rest of your life. But Timaeus, it was his life, a life without hope. Every day, just for him to be able to survive, he would have to go outside the street and to beg. He had to beg. Now people, Jewish people are gracious and merciful. They have to share, ladies and gentlemen, their blessings. I'd like you to look to the next person beside you. Tell this line, say that to the next person. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Come on. Let's give God a clap of praise. I went to Brother Nonum's house last Friday and I said, I must bring something to my good brother. It's Christmas today, and I had something in my pocket, but I received a blessing of an spaghetti, Brother Nono. I went to Brother Nono and gave it to Brother Nono, at least for their Christmas. 
I love Brother Noah and Sister Gina. You know what happened, Brother Noah, Sister right. Gina? Two days later, no, I went to you Thursday. Two days later, yesterday, when I went to the radio station, I know until he heard this one name, the Nazarene. Who was this guy? He got so intrigued. And he wanted, deep inside in, in his heart, oh, that I can meet him one day. Maybe he, he did pray, you know, in his nights before he would sleep. That I can meet this Nazarene, this carpenter. We know him today as Jesus Christ. But his time, you know, he had different names. And that one day that he so decided, indeed came. When Jesus visited his town, on a distance he heard a crowd, a crowd of hundreds, maybe thousands, people buzzing the name of Jesus. I like us to say that gracious and beautiful name right now. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus. Let's say stronger one last time. Jesus. Can we give the Lord a clap of praise? <laughs> Don't ever fail to mention that name anytime, every time. Because that name is salvation. Amen. When you are before death, you can cheat death when you mention that name. When you are in your need, God will make a way even when there seems to, to be no way because of that name. When you pray, you only can have the access to heaven. Not because of Mary's name or whoever's saint's name, but only of that one single wonderful, powerful, holy name, the name of Jesus. Amen. People were bossing his name. The blind man turning here and turning there. Huh? The Nazarene is here. He got so crazy for a while that he forgot of his vocation of to beg for alms. He forgot he had to have some, uh, what is this boundary? Like 300? <laughs> like 400 on that day? He forgot all about those. He went crazy for a while because he had that wonderful name in town. And sure indeed, the crowd was on the coming to his direction. And the crowd passed his way. And you know, uh, the hearing the hearing of this man, his auditory, something like picked that indeed the Nazarene passed his way and now has long gone for some distance. That he had to act something crazy, and he will if he would if he would not do without moment in the time, he would lose the chance and opportunity. So that that is what the scripture said. It's so read a while ago. He began to be yelling to his loudest. He went crazy. Then the Bible said the apostles went. And the Bible said, are you still there? Yeah. They rebuked the man. Say rebuked. Rebuke. Say louder, rebuked. Rebuke. In other words, demand the man. How would you man a man? Like carolers. Jingle bell, jingle bell. 3 o'clock in the afternoon while you and your siesta. <laughs> Maybe you would get out from your room, open up the gate, and start to scold the little jingle bell, the jingle bell. Shut up! We're here 20 pesos. You the game for the day. Open up the mingle, Kwano. Kulak. Yara ganya kunele. Yang hinamus get na regalo si lente makalas ni manos. Pero imbis el lente para grita liama isakay la tensyon ni Jesus. Mas paya grita el lente na ito pwede aguanta el mga apostoles kung el grita da el lente. Na sila pwede sangga kung el the the worse he yeah maybe it's not the more but the worse he yeah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me! I've been so desperate. Until Jesus, he got the attention of the Lord. Jesus thought. Turned around. He was asking those around him, are you still there? Somebody is calling my name. 
Who is he? Bring that man to me. And the apostles, perhaps, did argue the Lord for a while. Lord, we are on a schedule. We are behind times. We have to go somewhere. We have you. Remember an appointment. We cannot waste our time to the blind. Remember, when it's a soul, you never do waste the time to share the love of God to the person we see need. Amen. Hello? Amen. Well, when it's for a cat, when it's for a dog, when it's for a chicken, whatever, well, you can say, okay, we postpone next time. But when it's for a living soul, one needy living soul, it's not. it, it will not be a waste. It will not be a waste of time. Jesus prevailed, the man now standing face to face with the Lord. But he still could not see. Jesus asked him, what would you want me to do? What do you want me? You have been packing my name. Anything I shall do. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you can get the attention of the Lord, you can be given the chance, all of the chance under heaven where anything you wish and anything you want and anything you could ask, it can be granted to you on that one single moment. And don't you know, ladies and gentlemen, you're very coming here. You're getting the attention of God and be ready. Because anything you want, anything you wish, and anything you Amen. say unto the Lord Amen. can be granted by Him. Amen. 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 Let's give God a praise. The man did not ask us for money. The man did not ask for an increase of arms. He said, Lord, that I may receive my son. Jesus replied graciously this line. According to your faith, let sight come on you. And right away, just in an instance, you know, in a snap of fingers, his eyes was opened and the man was yeah, able to see. I have my bucket list when I get to heaven. Perhaps one of those is I wanted to meet Abraham. I really would want to shake hands with Adam. One day when I get to heaven, one of my bucket lists, I want to meet as well blind Bartimaeus. I want to ask him personally, how was it to feel? How was it to experience personally a healing touch by the Master? Because his experience here is very graphic. Are you still there? Yes. So as I, what I'm saying here, the greatest gift, greatest miracle, and the most thanksgiving we are to give to the Lord. Never ever forget that. We must and we ought to thank God for giving us the gift of salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now turn to someone else and tell the next person beside you, I thank God for His salvation. Come on. I thank God for His salvation. Can we give the Lord a clap of praise? There was a crowd surrounding Jesus, but he only came for that one blind man. Yes. Thousands. But you know what? The story about this passage was not about the crowd. Because the crowd yelled, but they were gone. Funny because in the Bible, there was a crowd that never stopped to shout, Hail Jesus, Hail Jesus. But five days later, these were the same crowd who yell and shout, Crucify Jesus! Crucify Jesus! <laughs> That's why, ladies and gentlemen, there is this one great lesson that God could be giving to us. Never, a, never, a, never ever underestimate one single self, one single soul expressing sincerity to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Because comparing a crowd to noisy, a crowd though, what is this? Uh, their noise is, uh, is, uh, is, dumb, is dumbing. You know, you, you, could, uh, you could be de deepen, deepening, the, the noise is deepening. But these crowds are not committing their lives to the Lord. 
But this one single soul is very sincere, very honest. Just one single soul committing his life to God. That's why in the story, Jesus turned his back from the crowd and he gave his full focus to a one single soul. Are you still there? Can we give God a clap of praise? Now listen, when you cry to God, let nothing stop you to get His attention. Criticism is the legalistic spirit that definitely will stop you. Uh, now based on the passage that we read, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to encourage you. Never stop to cry to God, amen? amen. Not to stop someone else and tell that person, say, never stop to cry to God, come on. Yes. yes. When you are in need, never stop to cry to God. Lord, why? Let nothing stop you to get His attention. Even the experts. And you know what? Never even be stuck with criticism. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, listen. As we progress in life, we never can avoid criticism. We never can avoid critical people. Hello? Anywhere you go, you go to school, worse. You go to office, especially if you're surrounded with unbelievers, I tell you, it's like sometimes hell on earth. In church, yes, sometimes. Even the most brethren in the Lord, Jesus did have, uh, well, he did have Judas, he did have, everyone actually turned, him, turned the backs away from him when he was crucified. They, they were only the women who were left who supported Jesus Christ. And are you still there? Yeah. But never able, never ever stop to cry out and get the attention of God. Uh, it was June. Brother Nonum, Sister Gina, OJ here. I'm very happy for the Templates. Let's give back a like, praise to that. We rejoice together with them. Temples. I know their thanks to God. Ready yourself. Because in a while, we're going to give ourselves a chance to connect personally to God and to thank Him. The doctor explained to Sister Gina a little bit and to OG. When Sister Gina kept to be crying, the doctor went to the daughter because the daughter's younger. And OG partly understood the explanation of the doctor. The doctor's only a small fellow. You remember, G? He's, he's a Muslim. Ask me, Pastor, you come, please. I wish you can talk personally to the doctor. I... Oji and I looked for the doctor. We cornered him. It was 7.30 in the evening. I got the doctor. Doc explained to us what happened to our brother. I'm his pastor. And the doctor gave us time. Make long story short, layman's term. The doctor said, Si Brother Nonong Dao, He's on a 50-50 chance. But mag survive to si Brother Nono on that ordeal when he was in the hospital ba? Yung naka-host si Brother Nono. Sabi ng doktor, milagro lang talaga, sir. Sabi ko kay OG, umiiyak na si OG. Kasi si OG, isang ka, isa, isang anak, ano po? Inisip niya si Papa, inisip niya si Mama. Talaga, umiiyak na umiiyak si OG. Kaya, Pakilaya kita si Manny, explain ko mama, pastor. Nag-isip din ako, baano kaya namin sabi ni Stugina? Pero sabi ko sa sarili ko, baka i-blame din kami ni Stugina, kami dalawa ni Oji, pag hindi namin isabi sa kanya. So I was just honest. Then I went to si Stugina, following day, si Stugina, magkwento kita. Magkwento. Sabi mo ito kung si Stugina, kung magasang sambong, siya baka ano, no? Mang mangkwento kita. Mang... Brother Nong, takagali si Brother Jason. Si Jason na, Jay, no? Upol ko yan. Sige, mangkwento kong... Ako no, no, nga? The king. Sister Gene. Pabol me. I was... kinder to Sister Gina trying to give to give her hope. By the way, when you encourage her, always give hope in your encouragement. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Miss Jean, Brother Nono, in that moment, I was telling her, is going home. What's up with Mato? Pagulbida yan na siya, Lucy Brother Nono, I'm my master Jean. 
Alira kan? Yang tende si, yang tende ni. Sabit tu pun saya, saya nak bawa kan isi tu. Jika pasal tu kiri payu, tu kiri payu, muri si brother Nonong. He, he, she was thinking they are already old, and she, she will be alone. Like this blind man, Sister Gina did not give up God. He was telling God, I will not let you go this time, this moment. In my prayer, I am asking you, do not take my, my husband home. By all explanation, medically, scientifically, Brother Nono was to give up already his physical body. But the prayer of Sister Gina, that's, that's what we shall do, brothers and sisters, when we face before God, when what we will pray, when you have not right away received the answer of the prayer, do not give up and say, anyway, Lord, I go to the next plan B. Hello? Lord, you bless my life. Brother is already blessed. Sister is already blessed. Lima na kami. Yung pang-anim na blessed na. Ako wala pa. Lima pang-anim na blessed na. Panginoon, kinalimutan mo na siguro ako. O sige, ikambiyuhin ko yung prayer ko, Panginoon. Siguro, ano, nakalimutan mo na ako. Now, every single person, every single child of God has his own timetable. Yes. Every single child of God has his own date with destiny by God Almighty. He has his due time. Amen? Amen. Just hold on. Tell to the next person beside you and, and, and tell him, tell her, just hold on. Kumapit ka, kapatid. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Diba? Praise be to the living God. There are certain members. I know what you will be thanking the Lord today. Really. For example, see Brother Michael, no? I saw something change to Brother Michael's life. A Brother Michael's life and the life of their family. After he underwent a surgery. Makita mo kasi si Brother Michael, ma... Malaki, ano? And then suddenly, nung pakiramdam niya sa kanyang tiyan, extreme na extreme yung sakit ng kanyang tiyan. Pumunta siya sa hospital. Akala niya kabag lang. Kinakonvince niya ng sarili kasi <laughs> mahal man mag-hospital. Di ba ganun tayo, no? Chinake up ng doktor. Ay, to! Mayaw! Hindi, hindi. Haluin doktor eh. Sabi ng doktor, Sabi ng doktor, may magtuka sa bladder mo. Kaya pala, palaging sumasakit yung siya ni Brother Michael. Kailangan ko ng immediate surgery. Bago lang sila nakaranas ng storm at that time. So there he was. Inisip na ni Michael yung trabaho niya, yung gastusin lahat. And he was, kailan yun Mike? Last year ba yun? O last year of October, no? So more than a year na. Grabing kailanganas nila sa problema. Sino dito? Sino, sino sa atin dito? Nasaan katutak talaga yung problema natin? Kapatid, just hold on. Just hang on. God is not yet done. Amen. Amen. Palagpangan natin si Lord. God is yet done in your life. Katapos din ang unos ni na Brother Michael. Dahan-dahan. Ngayon nasa restorative. Uh, ano tawag nito? Restorative uh, cycle na sila. Pichy Lenny. Uh, it is her six months sa DepEd. Nag-a-adjust pa din si Teacher Lenny kasi si Teacher Lenny naka-assign sa Bumiyaw. Alas tres ng madaling maaraw. Bumigising, ano, araw yun. Saka, they have three children. Yung, uh, yung youngest, five-year-old. So the sacrifice, the sacrifice that they will have to do. Pero tayong mga anak ng Diyos, sanay tayo sa sakripisyo. Amen? Amen. Kasi alam natin, wala tayong makuha kung hindi tayo marunong magsakripisyo. No Amen. nuts, Amen. no glory. Amen. Every glory, there is a price that we pay. Amen. Si Sir Eden, di ba? 
Kala natin, we look with the blues. The eldest in the family. It was last December. Thanksgiving natin, Ma'am Rose. Wala kayo dito dalawa. Doon kayo sa Manila. Nag-be birthday si Seren. Nandun sa Manila, no? Ah, dito pa kayo, Seren? The time? He was to be brought. Kasi, meron nakita sa kanyang puso how many uh, millimeters a clogging vein. Kailangan mano yun, ma-surgery yun, ma-opera ma -opera yun. Sapagat pag hindi yun ma-surgery, ma-opera, something uh, terminal could happen over that. And uh, si Sir Ed, okay na sa kanya eh. Sabi niya, kukunin ako ng Panginoon. <laughs> kukunin ako. Pero yung mga anak, hindi tala na nag-give up. They have a faith na ang daddy can still have a longer life. Si Edgar, Edgar came home. May dalawa na lang. Pangatlo pala ako, anong si Rick? Kaming dalawa ni Sister Delia. Ma'am Rose. Umuwi talaga. Dalawa na lang anak nila po. Isa na sa US na nasa sa Canada. Umuwi yung lalaki. Kinumbinsi ang tatay, ang dad. Kailangan ka magpa-surgery dad. In-explain ka si nurse. Nakumbinsi ko si Sir Ed. Alam ko kasi yung explanation, ano yung open heart surgery. Kunin yung puso mo for a while, ilalagay yan sa isang bucket, punong-puno ng ice. Kaya nga open heart surgery, bubuksan at saka kunin yung, ano, yung uh, defective na, hindi pala, puputulin yung defective na artery. Tapos, few, ano lang yun, few, uh, few minutes or few hours lang yun. Tapos, kukuha ng isang vena dito galing sa, ano, sa binte. Live vein yun. At saka, kaya nga, ang pinatawa ng bypass kasi parang sa kuryente yan eh. Ikukundim yung ano, yung uh, tawag nito. Hindi nagpa-function na vein na. Ikukundim. Tapos lalagyan ng bagong connection yung vein dito. Ang marvel of our technology today. Science today. Gotcha. Umayat kaya si Sir Ed, pag-uwi nga, it took him three months to recover. Kaya nakama man niyo na, nakikita ko nag-email kami. Si Sir Ed is always high to God. Pero ang isa sa nakita ko talaga lately, na nag-re-rejoice Mom Rose, na she eventually embraced the faith of her husband. I think it's the most thanksgiving that they can be giving to God after salvation this afternoon. To Him be the glory. Amen? Amen. Palagpaka na natin sila. Si Sister Joy, nandito tonight. Five days in hospital ang bata. Kahapon lang sila lumabas. Sister Joy, being your pastor, I'm very happy to see you. Let me tell you, the Lord is the happiest to see you. Ten years ago, may tao pa dyan? Because we are a family. December 23, who yun? Routine inspection, routine work. Si Brother Jess, uh, he's the best, one of the best line man in Zamzelco. The brown out dito sa downtown kasi may uh, something like short circuit. So silang tinawag, team nila. Routine yun eh. Araw-araw kang trabaho. Kasi the best na line man sa Zamzelco sa Zamboanga, umakyat. Ang birthday kasi ni Brother Jess, 25. Kaya ang pangalan niya, Jess, eh. Kasi he was born on a December 25. Dalawa pong Jesus natin, isa wala ngayon, eh. So, siya yung makyat. Safety precaution. Akala, akala ng lahat ng team na sarado na yung kuryente. Dalawa pa lang yung, ano, yung ninya na nag, nagpapas, you know, on that connection. Nung hinawakan niya yung, ano, yung, yung wire, mga kapatid, yung wire pala, akala nila, the whole team, negative na, wala lang kuryente, yun pala, light. 13,800 volts. Paghawak niya, mga kapatid, nag-transfer ang, ano, ang electricity sa kanyang katawan, he convulsed so much. Arteries in his brain, arteries in his, you know, uh, nag-exit sa kanyang katawan. Doon sa itaas, nagaganon si Brother Jess. Mula sa, ano, sa posti sa itaas, nag-plummet down si Brother Jess, ganun, split of seconds. Yung nag-scatch sa kanya, ano po, dahil sa haba, how many meters yun? 
after catching him broken some of his bones dalawa sila na hospital pero si brother Jess for how many days sobrang isang simana mga kapatid nasa ICU sabi ng doktor 10% lamang ang chance nitong pasyente natin makasurvive parang mabuang si Sister Sheila at that time kasi mga bata si Nicole at saka si Colleen you were still very little maalala pa ninyo si Dada kapatid ko sa Panginoon Amen may mag-rally talaga si Lani, si Shik, you know, si, si Ocheng. The time, last, buhay pa ba si Sister Rose? Wala na? Tsaka yung simbahan natin, nag-rally doon. Nag-rally din, nag-pipikit. <laughs> Rally din prayer. Pinag-pray namin si Brother Jess. Pero before I went to the hospital, nakinig ako kay God. Sabi ko, Lord, ano yung ipag-pray ko? Si Michelle pang tumawag mo sa akin. Uh, sabi ni Lord, I will... I will heal the man. You go and pray. Pinag-pray ko dahil sa kaba ko. Yung prayer ko, marinig ko yung boses ko, mali-mali yung prayer. Now listen to me, church. Kahit yung prayer natin, magkamali-mali. Pero pag tayo po yung lumalapit sa Panginoon, naintindihan niya in full ni Lord. Amen! Palagpakan natin si God. May long story short. Sinasurgery si Brother Jess. Nag, ano yun, nag, uh, yung kanyang brain, uh, binuksan ang kanyang, ano, yung kanyang ulo, uh, in-addressed yung pumutok na ano, artery, uh, nagkaroon siya ng memory lapse and everything. And uh, I think it was, it was a, it was a December 20, it was a December 20, after, after his tawag ito, uh, accident. Sabi ng doktor, kailangan 3 days after the surgery. Uh, babangon, babangon to siya. O hindi babangon, magugulay. Tapos, ito, si, si Sheila. Kilala naman natin si Sheila do. Ano talaga si Sheila? Kailangan hindi matakot. Kaya tanggulay ka si Sheila at that time na eh. Hindi ka lang yung na, na hospital. Pumunta kami ni Sister Delia, nagbisita kami. Binulungan ni Sister Delia. Si Brother Chu. May binulong siya. Nakalimutan ko na yung binulong ni Sister Delia. Binulong mo yan mga kapatid. Yung hoses may dito sa ano sa utak. Kasi dinidrain ang utak. Tumayo yan si Brother Jess. And he wanted to pull all of the hoses. Now ngayon mga kapatid, dyan kami. We tried to hold the hand of Brother Jess. Why? Because he wanted to go home na. I believe on that, on that moment, on that time, Sister Delia whispered, whispered a whisper of life to the man. God used the voice of Sister Delia to whisper a whisper of life to the man. Ten years. Happy birthday. Sister Sheila because she's still in pain of the passing away of Michelle. Pastor, when did January get on the iglesia? I shared that. What happened to Brother Jess and it's going to be 10 years? Then I said, no, we will go to church and have our Thanksgiving. She did not hesitate to say yes. Why? Because the family are thankful to the Lord. Amen? Palakpakan doon natin si God. Si Ma'am Jo, nagdala ng lead ng sister sa Panginoon. Ma'am Jo, you must be rewarded by God. God must be rewarding you for a one just one single sister you brought to God. Di ba, naalala mo yung sister? Ikaw din, nag-operate ka? Every Sunday, she comes to church. Imagine. Try is not a surgery. Because of the trial, si Ma'am Jo, may trial din. Sinabihan niya kanya ng assistant. You try God. In faith, she would have to tell that. And she's now going to church every Sunday. One single soul. Si Sister Rose, within this year, gabi niyong trial na, Sister Rose. Namatay yung husband last year. Si Ray J na bangga on, ano, on, a, on a new year. Then, the, anong tawag ito? Si Ray J, kailangan operahan. Nagka, nag goldstone. Pero ngayon, si Steros. Tawag ito. Marami talaga tayong pasalamatan sa Panginoon. Because God has been very good to our lives. Amen? Amen. Marang parang natin si Lord. Yung kapatid ko, si Steven Loco, kanina, nagdala sila na, ano, na, ng Golden Ribbons, I believe. Bakit sila masyadong masaya sa pagkat for two years nilang pinagpipre ang pinakapaborito nilang anak. Kasi in the family we have our favorites. Prayer nila after graduating my niece na makalabas yung daughter nila. 
si Princess is now on her first month in Saudi. That's why the family is very happy and they know that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God really answers prayer. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And you know what? Marami pa tayo mga prayers. You know, my time's not enough to relate to you one by one and, and to share one to the one point to the other of how good God has been to our lives. Well, let me tell you, dami pa tayong mga prayers na God is yet about to answer. Never give up. Amen? Amen. Palagpakan doon natin si Lord. Last na lang. Last na lang. Kasi, two years from now, John, you're going to be me, ha, na John? Alala mo si John. You see, wala talaga nagbago ni John. Except that, in my press, nagwa ko si John, kaya nakaunod, unod, baday, no? Si John is one of the first two lawyers that by God's grace, acts were able to produce. First two lawyers, muna, kasi there will be more lawyers than to come from acts. Amen. Amen. Alala ko yun si John? Malay natin. Kasi si Fred's best friend ko, pastor, sugto na ko, dili. Iko, buta na, dahi. Kunya, itry ang ihan faith, dahi. And, they are now seven years. Six. Kailan na mo, dahi? Four years. Oh, four years, dahi, no? Oh, sa'yo, mga accounting. Ah, seven years, siguro, including na ang plan. And then si John, ah, we pray for him. Look at him now. He's, he's on his practice. One of one of the lawyers we have, uh, anytime she will just come into church, see uh, si Suzette, praise God. Diba John? One of the best, best things that the Lord did into our lives. Amen, amen, amen. See Danica, no, Danica, and the uh, time I see, see the siblings, I'm missing Sister Daisy. Our first Christmas, Thanksgiving where mama is not around. Our uh, first second. Yeah, first. Hallelujah. Palakpakan doon natin si Lord. I would like to stand with you. I would like to stand with you.